Today we're going to take a look at section 2.1, which is reasoning and logic. Um, not going to be a lot of calculation kind of stuff in this section. So if you didn't bring your calculator today, it was probably a good day to forget it. Um, bring it next time. We might need it then. Um, but what we're going to look at today is we're going to look at the way that we use our language. Um, I will tell you what, that having looked at this, and I do it every semester, I've been doing this every semester for quite a few semesters now, it bugs me when I hear people use logic wrong. And you will probably get bugged at some point too by it because you'll be like, that's not how she should have said that. So let's take a look at some of these examples today. To start with, we're going to talk about what a statement is. A statement is a sentence that is either true or false. And what I'd like to do is to give you both an example and a non-example of a statement. So an example of a statement is, I ate eggs for breakfast. It's either true or it's false. You can't sort of have eaten eggs for breakfast. It doesn't really work like that. You either did or you didn't. So that's a statement. A non-example, something that would not be considered a statement, would be What did you eat for breakfast? So what's wrong with this? Why is this not a statement? It's a question. It doesn't have an answer that's either true or false, right? The answer would be cereal or... I skipped breakfast or whatever it is. It wouldn't be true or false as the answer to if it's, you know, is it, a, is it something that's true or false? Um, another way that you'll see non-statements, uh, non a non-example of a statement is if it's a command. Eat your breakfast. It's not a question, right? We call it a command, but it doesn't have a true or a false to it. Okay, statements are always either true or false. Negations are the logical opposite of the breakfast, of breakfast, sorry. <laughs> logical opposite of a statement. Let me show you how they're written, and then I'll give you my example, sorry. We put a tilde, P. So a statement would be letter, so we would write it as like P, then the negation would be tilde P. Okay, so a tilde in front means it's a negation. Okay, for my example above, the negation would be what? What would be the logical opposite of, I ate eggs for breakfast? Yeah, super tricky stuff right here, right? I did not. That looks funny. Eat eggs for breakfast. Now, there are some statements that are really easy to negate. All we had to do was put the word not in it, and we were good to go. Other statements, and we'll talk through them as we finish this section, we won't finish it today, are harder to do that with. And in particular, there are statements that have the next kind of, what do we call, quantifiers to them. There are two types of quantifiers. One is universal. It refers to each, every, each and every element in a set. Some key words you see if it's a universal quantifier are all, every, no, or none. These are probably the statements that your mom told you, don't say that. You always fill in the blank. You never fill in the blank. Those are universal statements. Um, I'll give you an example. I've got one written down, sure. How about this? All dogs go to heaven. Whoops. There we go. Heaven. The word all is one of those words. All means nobody gets left out. All for one and one for all kind of thing, right? All right. A universal quantifier, I'm sorry, an existential quantifier, the other one, refers to one or more elements in the set. Some, at least one, or there exists. 
Those are phrases you see when you've got a existential quantifier. So here's an example. Some people like swimming. Do you see that word some? Now, it could mean, like if I talk to you guys and I say some people like swimming, it could be that every single person in this room does, right? Everybody would also be some. That would be okay. It wouldn't hurt anything. So if I said some dogs go to heaven, it wouldn't necessarily mean that some don't. We're leaving the possibility that maybe they don't. But it doesn't have to mean that. But it's a much less strong statement, right? The statement some means that sometimes they do and maybe sometimes they don't. So it would be much better to say, sometimes you leave the door open instead of me saying, you always leave the door open, right? Probably somebody's not going to get very upset if I say, sometimes you leave the door open because they're going to go, yeah, sometimes I do. And if you say, you always, and you're like, no, I, I didn't. I, I closed it last week. I specifically remember, okay? So here's the thing. Creating negations when you have quantifiers, existential or universal, can be really tricky. It's a lot more difficult to do than just putting the word not in the middle of the sentence. So I'm going to give you a couple of examples where we would do negations for these. So I've got my all dogs go to heaven one, okay? Write a negation for the statement. Now think about it with me. If we made the statement that all dogs go to heaven, every single one of them, what is the least thing that it would take to make that statement false? What? Think, don't think words. Think logistically. All dogs go to heaven. What is the least thing that would make that false? If your mom says to you, you always leave the door open, what is the least thing that could happen that makes that false? One time. Right? Not doing it one time. The least that can make this false is if just one dog doesn't. Agreed? We don't have to say all of them don't. We just need one of them for the statement to be false. That's all it takes. So when we're looking at these quantifiers, what happens is universal quantifiers, when you do a negation, become existential quantifiers. I need to replace the word all with one of those existential statements. So you guys can pick one. Do you want to use some, at least one, or there exists? Because we could use any of them on this one and write a sentence that makes sense. Some. That's a nice one on this. Sure. So this is a negation. Some dogs what? What do I also have to say to actually make this negated? Don't. Some dogs don't go to heaven. Now, if you didn't want to use the word some, you could say at least one dog doesn't go to heaven. Or you could say, there exists a dog that doesn't go to heaven. Maybe you've met that dog before. I don't know. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Some of you are laughing when you know you have. <laughs> All right. So that's what it takes. So one key thing, and I want you to write it down, is when you do negations, universal quantifiers become existential, and it happens every single time. They always switch. Universal becomes existential. Now, here is a statement maybe some of you can relate to. Some of my classes this semester are hard. Now, it could be when you say that, you actually mean they all are, and that'd be okay. It wouldn't be a false statement if all of them were. But what I want you to see is where the quantifier is. What is the quantifier here that you see? Some. And what type of quantifier is it? Existential. So as soon as you see existential, you should automatically know I got to change it into a universal quantifier. Now there's a couple of ways to do this. We have sort of the universal quantifiers that are sort of in the positive, all and every, and we have some that are in the negative, no and none. Okay? I'm going to write a statement with each set of them because you could use either one on the statement. One of them sounds more grammatically correct. You'll see what I mean when I write them. All right, so here's the first one. Let's change some into all. That's fine. We can do all of my classes. 
this semester. All of that stays the same. Now, the part at the end has to have something done to it. Sometimes it will stay the same, or hard. Sometimes it needs to change, or not hard. And you have to see what makes sense with the context you're saying. If we've changed it from some to all, do I need to say all of my classes this semester are not hard, or do I need to say all of them are hard? Are not is what we would go with, okay? It still has to be the opposite of what we started with, are not hard. Notice what I didn't say. Some of you probably had already rewritten it in your, in your, in your brain, and you changed the word hard to what? Easy. Easy. You have to be careful, especially let's think about this one because this is a good example. Can you always tell me that the class is hard or easy, or is there some middle ground sometimes? And that's how most things are in life. There's some middle ground when you're sort of describing how things are. So we want to make sure that we actually clarify to be the exact opposite, and the word not will do that for us without sort of inferring something that wasn't meant to be inferred. I want to rewrite this again with the existential, or sorry, the universal quantifier that's sort of the negative of this. And I'm going to put the word none just because no sounds weird with the grammar going on. So none of my classes would be another way to start this. None of my classes this semester. Now I need you to think about it again. We will either use the phrase are hard or are not hard. What's going to make sense with the way that we've begun the statement? Are hard. None of them are hard. That's the opposite of some of them are hard. Okay? So none of them are hard. Now, in some sense, it sort of feels like, well, I didn't, I didn't actually make it negative. But you did. Where did you make it negative in the second example? At the word none at the beginning. Right? So we've got the negation piece right here that not, and this one's got the negation feel to it at the beginning. Now, which one do you think is more the way we speak? The second one's actually the more the way we speak. The first one's technically correct, and if you use it, it's okay. The second one's just the more, is more correct in the way we speak when we think about this. So. <clears throat> All right, in judging whether things are statements are true or false, we're going to use a tool called truth tables. Just curious, who's used truth tables before? Oh, first time for all of you, fantastic. Okay, truth tables are cool. Um, what truth tables are is they're used to show all possible true-false patterns for statements. Okay, so we already said a statement is one or the other. It's either true or it's false. It can't be both. It can't be somewhere in between. That's not a, there's not an in-between gray area. It's either true or it's false. So I want to show you how we would create a truth table for a negation first. So what you're going to do is you're going to draw a vertical line and a horizontal line. And we're going to say that our statement is P. Okay, so maybe the statement is all dogs go to heaven. Maybe the statement is I ate eggs for breakfast. I don't care what it is, but we're just going to call it P for the moment. And on the first page, we talked about tilde P being the representation for the negation. So if I ate eggs for breakfast, the negation is I did not eat eggs for breakfast, right? Okay, so this is what we're setting up. Now think with me. If the first statement's true, what do you think the negation is? False. You got it. And if the first statement is false, what is the negation? True. You guys are great. Now, I made an example earlier, or I mentioned earlier, I should say, that not um, all statements are really easy to do negations for. Some statements um, don't have those universal or existential quantifiers. We put the word not in and we're done. Others have universal quantifiers and that makes it tricky. Another thing that makes it tricky is if the statement is called compound. A compound statement is two statements joined with a connective, such as and, or, if then, can you think of any other connectives that you do join statements with? There's one that's not mentioned that people sometimes think of. But, that's the one they think. Um, the word but is, is equivalent to and. So if you do think of or see the word but written anywhere, it's the same as and. Okay? 
think about it. I say, um, I ate eggs this morning, but I also ate toast. Well, it means and, right? And I also ate toast. We're using it sort of contextually in English to mean um, that there's more to it or, you know, in addition to it in a slightly different way, but it means the same as and. Okay, so there are two types of negation or of um, truth tables that we're going to look at today. The first one is called a conjunction. A conjunction is the equivalent of an and statement, and it's true when both statements are true. So if, we, if our statements are P and Q, an AND connective looks like an upside down V. If you were to round it, you might think it kind of looks like an N, N for intersection, N for conjunction, okay? So this is an AND statement. All right, so let me show you how a truth table works. So we're going to create a truth table by putting that vertical bar. We need three columns in our truth table. One of them is gonna be a column for P, because we have a statement that's P. One of them is a column for statement Q. And one of them is a column for the combined statement P and Q. I'm gonna give you an actual example of these in a moment, but I first wanna fill in these two columns. So one possibility is that when I give two statements, they're both individually true. I ate eggs for breakfast, I ate a banana for breakfast, and they both individually are true statements. That was actually my breakfast this morning, in case you're curious. Okay. Now, it's also possible that the first piece of the statement's true, and the second piece is false. So sort of like a half-truth. But if I can do it that order, I could probably also go the other direction, right? The first part could be false, the second part could be true. And what's still missing? They could both be false statements. Now, I want you to sort of make a note to yourself that every truth table that you do is going to look like that at the beginning. So no matter if you don't know what to do next at all, you can always do the first two columns. And while technically it doesn't matter the order of it, it matters to me because it's going to make my life a lot easier grading and everybody else's if you put them in this order every time. It's also going to make it easier when you look in the back of the book because this is always the order they put it in. So the way that I think about it is I have true, true, false, false, true, false, true, false. Okay? All good? Excellent. Now I want to give you some examples. Okay, so we're going to let, oops, we're going to let P be the statement just to talk about how we decide what the column in the end actually looks like. P is going to be the statement, I am female. And Q is going to be the statement, I teach math. And hopefully I can give you some examples so that this will make sense. So. I walk into class on the first day, and I say, hi, I'm Dr. Hans. I am a female, and I teach math. Both those same statements are individually true. So when I put them together and say, I'm a female, and I teach math, you would say, that's a true statement. So if both individual statements are true, then the result in total is true. OK, which order do I have it in now? Um, OK, Dr. Young walks in to class. Do you guys know who Dr. Young is? Most people, okay. Dr. Young walks into your class and she says, I'm a female and I teach math. Would that statement be true? No, right? She doesn't teach math. So that would be a false statement if that's what she walked in and said. Now let's imagine, do you guys know who Dr. Bond is? Some people do, okay. So Dr. Bond is a math professor. Um, he teaches for us and he's a he. <laughs> that's the important part you need to know. He's a he and he teaches math. So he walks in and he says, uh, I am a female and I teach math and you probably would giggle at him. So you didn't giggle at Dr. Young, but you probably would giggle at Dr. Bond because clearly he isn't a female. And so that would be a false statement. And then Dr. Whitlocks walks in and he says, I'm a female and I teach math, neither of which statements are true, which would mean the result is also false. Okay. So the reality is, if you look back at the statement itself about conjunctions, conjunctions are true if and only if 
both statements are true. So true, true, true. Everything else, if it's got a false statement as a portion of it, the result is false. All right, we have time for one more, and that's going to be our disjunction. A disjunction is the equivalent of an or statement. And if it is true, if either statement or both statements is or are true. It's written PQ, and it looks actually like there's a V between them. Okay. Or. So we're going to create the truth table, three columns. I want you to fill in the first two columns because you already know how to do that. So fill those in, and then we'll check to make sure everybody's on the same page. What's the first column look like? What goes under P? True, true, false, false. And then what goes under Q? True, false, true, false. Good job. So they'll always start that way. Even if you don't know what to do next, you know those first two columns. Column three is P or Q. And we're going to use our exact same statements as last time. I'm a female. I teach math. And we're going to use our same subjects, too. I walk in and I say, I'm a female or I teach math. And it may sound a little funny, but am I a female or I teach math? Yeah, you might be like, why did she say or? Shouldn't she have just said and? Okay, yeah, I could have. But it would still be a true statement. Awkward, but true. Dr. Young walks in and Dr. Young says, I'm a female or I teach math. And you would say, that's true because she is a female. Dr. Bond walks in. You still might giggle at him, but he walks in and he says, I'm a female or I teach math. And it's true because he does teach math. And Dr. Whitlock walks in and says, I'm a female or I teach math. And that's false. So on a true state, or I'm sorry, on a conjunction, it's only true if both statements are true. That was what this one was over here. But on a disjunction, it's true if either portion or both are true. So we get more truth statements when we have ors out of them. All right? And we will stop there for today.